Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fleece again. In video H of the female reproductive system, we're going to take a quick peek at menses again, menopause, fertilization, and a few more things. Remember that when fertilization does not occur, the corpus luteum cannot continue to produce progesterone, and so there is nothing anymore that can help maintain the development of the endometrium and so it needs to slough off. And without going into a great amount of detail, what's ultimately going to happen is that these spiral arteries that we find in the endometrium, remember how the uterus has the endometrium layer, the myometrium, and then we would have the perimetrium basically over here. Well, and in the endometrium we have the stratum basale and the stratum functionalis, and it's the functionalis that sloughs off. Well, in that layer, we have these rather spiral-looking arteries, and what's going to happen is that they'll go into spasms um, and cause the cells around them to die. Uh, literally, we see apoptosis occurring of this functional layer, and it'll then ultimately slough off and produce the menses that we're familiar with. If fertilization does occur, remember it most often occurs in the ovarian fallop or fallopian tubes. That's where we want it to happen. That would be the uh, normal place for it to happen. So here we see our ovary, ovulation is occurring. Here's our secondary oocyte being released and it's being fertilized by a sperm cell over here in the fallopian tube. And then very quickly, as the zygote forms, it's going to go through mitotic divisions to produce um, a multicellular embryo that will then form something we refer to as the blastocysts. It's a very early embryo, and it's the blastocyst that's formed around day eight or nine that will then literally attach itself to the wall of the uterus. Just to clarify, when we use the term fertilization, it refers to the fusion of two gametes. So in our situation, it would be the fusion of the nucleus of the sperm cell with the nucleus of our secondary oocyte. Remember that females are born literally with a certain amount of eggs and then those eggs that are referred to as uh, oocytes, they sit around all the way through puberty and then every month a few of those oocytes kick in to start maturing and only one of them actually is lucky enough to become a graphene follicle. So as we females mature, ultimately these I'll just call them eggs, are going to get older and older and um, there comes a point when a female stops ovulating or the eggs become um, um, depleted enough to where there is not enough uh, estrogen produced. And of course this is a phase in a woman's life that we refer to as menopause. Now. Does this mean that, if, that a woman is without any estrogen at all? Well, not quite so. Um, estrogen production can be taken over by conversion of fat with the help of an enzyme called aromatase. And we'll see too that other areas can take over or are responsible for estrogen production. Let's not forget that the adrenal gland also produces some levels of estrogen. But there are some consequences with the severe and somewhat rapid drop in estrogen, and that is we may start seeing problems with bone density. Um, somehow the vascular system is, in fact, is affected to where uh, women develop these very regular hot flashes. Um, the vagina begins to atrophy and becomes rather dry, making sexual intercourse much more painful. Hair as well as skin begins to thin, etc., etc. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that so many places in our body um, have estrogen receptors. 
it even impacts women's brains because of the drop in estrogen levels. Now, when estrogen levels begin to rise around puberty, it's going to lead to what we refer to as secondary sex characteristics. We looked at the secondary sex characteristics in the male. In the female, of course, this leads to the development of breasts, also enlargement of the external genitalia, just like in the male. Um, we also see that there's an increased deposit or deposition of fat underneath the skin, uh, particularly in the breast and the hip area. We also see that the hips begin to widen. And just like in the male, we start to see the growing of hair in the pubic area and in the armpits. We have one more video after this that focuses on the mam memory glands or the breasts.